Hello, I'm Bob Hanmer, here to continue the series of videos on mining and documenting the patterns for inner source development. In a previous video, you heard Tim Yao give an introduction to both patterns and to inner source. I'm going to spend a few minutes placing this effort to document and use inner source patterns within the larger context of patterns. As a reminder, a pattern is a way of describing a solution to a problem in a context. In, and this is done in such a way that it can be used many times and never used the same way twice. The ins and outs of patterns will be examined in future videos in the series. You might first have seen patterns in one of these books which are common in both industry and academia. Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software was the first widely popular software patterns book. Pattern-Oriented Software Architecture was another book you might have seen, or maybe Martin Fowler's Patterns for Enterprise Application Architecture, or any of a large number of other books and articles that describe patterns and offer patterns to help solve recurring problems. Patterns occur in a wide variety of contexts, such as building architecture, highway design, software architecture and design, and people and process. Patterns for inner sourcing fit right in because it involves people, process, software, and system architecture all rolled together. A little bit of history. The pattern concept was first documented by Christopher Alexander and brought to software by Peter Code, Jim Copleen, Kent Beck, Ward Cunningham, and others. Eventually, the Design Patterns book evolved, and the larger software community was introduced to patterns to help them solve the common problems encountered in object-oriented programming, and the pattern community expanded. In 1994, the Software Patterns community held its first conference dedicated to the reviewing of patterns. This is the PLOP, or Pattern Languages of Programming Conference, held annually. The PLOP conferences have been going strong ever since and have spawned a whole series of conferences around the world and a peer-reviewed technical journal for patterns that are not all about software. Inner sourcing patterns will be well received at the PLOP conferences. Patterns are reviewed at the PLOP conferences in writers' workshops, the same as any other work of literature or poetry. Currently, the inner source pattern miners are reviewing the patterns informally, but will evolve to writer's workshops eventually. Writer's workshops provide the author with a great feedback while acknowledging the hard work that went into writing the pattern being reviewed. In this set of videos, you'll hear some terminology discussed, such as forces and resulting context and donut patterns. I'll leave the definitions for later videos. Patterns are proven solutions so they already exist somewhere. They just need to be mined and shared. But even once mined, they will always require adaptation to precise situation of an organization applying the pattern. They're more than cookbooks because they explain why the solution works, which in turn allows the adaption and adoption in new places. You and your company might have the solution to a common problem that others can learn from and choose. Mining patterns for inner sourcing is just starting, and your experience can help everyone benefit from what you've learned already about inner sourcing. Help build the collection of inner sourcing patterns by joining the Inner Source Commons pattern community. Thank you, and please enjoy the other videos that explain more about patterns and inner sourcing patterns.